Hey, Dr. Christensen here with you. I wanted to talk about sleep issues with thyroid disease and how nutraceuticals can help. So this is a really big thing. So insomnia, overt insomnia, affects 33 to 50% of adults. Uh, almost half of people suffer from it rather frequently. And we know this has huge impacts on all facets of your health. If you can't sleep well, your brain doesn't get a chance to really recover properly. Uh, you won't feel good, uh, you'll, your mood will be off, your memory won't work well. And we also know that it changes how your liver works with the body's fuel states. Poor sleep can make someone diabetic in a day, and it can also make weight loss next to impossible. So totally critical. Sleep is something that is governed by many of the body's hormonal systems. There's orchestration between cortisol from the adrenals to wake us up and then melatonin from the pineal gland to help us go to sleep. So melatonin is the main hormone that causes us to sleep. And like hormones, it acts via receptors. So the body has little, little keyholes that are made to fit the key of melatonin. And with hormones, a counterintuitive thing is that the receptor counts can fluctuate. So hormones are so powerful that there's a lot of ways, a lot of checks and balances, a lot of ways your body can make little adjustments if they're not exactly right. So if there's too, if there's too little thyroid hormone, one of the adjustments your body makes is it increases the number of receptors. That way, even though there's not enough, you'll get the most of what you have. And it's the same thing for melatonin, but these things only work to a point. So if the levels are off, they're still off. But the receptors are important because they make it to where how something works when you take it is not always the way you would expect. And I'll come back to that. So melatonin is important to sleep, but it's also important to thyroid function. We now know there are many thyroid melatonin connections. In fact, along with the pineal gland, the thyroid gland is a large source of melatonin in the body. You heard that right, your thyroid makes melatonin. And when it's not working well in other ways, it's not working well in all ways, and it can't contribute to that total quite as effectively. And it's thought that to be one of the reasons why sleep is often poor with thyroid disease. Now, this goes both directions. So melatonin also improves thyroid function. So your thyroid makes melatonin and melatonin regulates its activity. We also know that melatonin regulates the immune response in many ways. So when we don't have a good melatonin rhythm, we're more apt to have autoimmune disease. We're more apt to attack things that we should not attack. So because of all the roles of melatonin in sleep, it's been used in supplemental form. But there's a big paradox. We talked before about receptors. So if ever you get too much of something, the way your system responds is by decreasing the number of receptors. So you, you close up the keyholes, you know, you stop them from opening. And in melatonin's case, the amount found in supplements causes blood levels that are much, much higher than the body makes. And in response to that, we lower our number of melatonin receptors. And if you've taken melatonin before, you've probably seen that people generally get side effects. You know, we often see weird dreams, uh, daytime grogginess, lingering fatigue, other issues like that. And this is why. And this is one that it really baffles me because the literature on melatonin is so clear about how much works well. And that's just not how much they put in pills. They're just not in alignment. We've got good evidence that the useful doses of melatonin can improve sleep quality. They can improve the sleep quantity. They can also lower the risk for cancers. They can help your eyes be healthier and function better. And they can often decrease digestive issues. So melatonin is well documented to be very helpful. However, the amounts we find in common supplements are often several times higher than the amount shown to work well. And at first blush, you might think, well, if there's a little extra, there's no harm. And that's true for a lot of things. For many, many nutrients, a little extra is of no harm. Enough extra always is, but sometimes but with nutrients, you've got a certain leeway. With hormones, that leeway is often narrower because of the receptor response. We don't have receptors for B12. You know, we, we absorb it and we use it, but we have receptors for hormones. And in those cases, if we're getting more than we need, it quits working. 
And that's a total paradox, but it's true. A high dose is like a low dose, or it's even worse than none. It's actually worse than what your body was doing by itself in many cases. Another big issue is that a lot of products are sustained release, meaning they gradually put melatonin into your bloodstream. Now, that's not what your body does when you're healthy. You make a pretty big burst of it, it conks you out, and then you clear it out of your system. So with delayed release melatonin, you're kind of like sleepy all the time because it's in your system for long after it would be normally. I'm really excited to make a compound that I've called thyrotonin. This is a microdose immediate release melatonin, and it's specifically helpful for those with thyroid disease. This is the dose that's found in most clinical trials for adults, been shown to be safe and effective. This version can be used for ongoing use as well. You can take it daily with no adverse effects. So thyrotonin, the usage of this is one capsule daily at bedtime. Very simple. <laughs> so this is Dr. Christensen, some nutraceutical solutions for sleep issues with thyroid disease and thyrotonin. All right, take great care, and I'll see you really soon. Bye-bye.